It's Math 152. Welcome back. We are looking at Section 3.3, Part 2. We're going to look at more of these trig substitutions for doing integrals, and we are going to take a peek at tangent and secant as the things that we substitute in. And what I want you to remember is that we're basing this around basing these around triangles. So, for example, things that you know, right triangles that look like this, and they're you know better looking triangles than this. But here is the idea. We have got tangent and secant that we could also do substitutions for. And therefore, they're for cases. So one of the cases is when we have um, square root of a squared plus x squared. We're taking the interval of, uh, integral of. And the other one is x squared minus x squared. And so this is the tangent case. This is the secant case. And in this substitution, if we have this in our integral that we're substituting into, substitute in a times tangent x and in this one we're going to substitute in uh, a times secant x and just to set up these triangles i know that tangent oops these should be theta sorry about that i know that if i divide this by you know both sides by a here i get tangent theta is x over a and tangent is opposite over adjacent so notice i have that right there and then by Pythagorean theorem I have square root of a squared plus x squared notice that that shows up in my triangle I always want that to show up in my triangle and for secant one um, secant again divide both sides by a so secant would be x over a and um, secant is one over cosine right it's the reciprocal of cosine so cosine is adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent so this should be x over a and notice by pythagorean theorem this side would be x squared minus x squared so there's my my substitutions there's my triangles that i can base them on so so here's some examples so as i look at each of these i notice that um, I have the square root of 1 plus x squared. So in this case, I have a squared plus x squared, where, where a is 1. So let's go ahead and do this. So my substitution is going to be tangent, where a is 1. So x is going to be tangent of theta. That means dx would be secant squared of theta, d theta. And I'm going to get a sketch of my triangle here just so i can refer back to it when i need to tangent is opposite over adjacent x over one so this would be square root of one squared which is one plus x squared and then that piece shows up in there so i'm feeling pretty good about that so let's go ahead and do this substitution so integral integral of one over the square root 1 plus x squared, so tangent squared. And notice dx is equal to secant squared theta times d theta. So this dx gets replaced with, and I could put it up here, my secant squared theta d theta. All right, and that's feeling pretty good. So then from here, uh, I know this the 1 plus tangent squared, I know that from my, my lookups over here. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So this would be secant squared theta over the square root of secant squared theta. And the square root of something squared is just itself. So this would be secant squared theta over secant theta. And if uh, something squared divided by itself is just one of them, so this would be the integral of secant. And I either know that or I can go look it up. And it's tempting to stop here, but remember, our original is in terms of x. So we need to substitute back in what these are. So one thing I know, I know that x is uh, tangent theta is equal to x. And I also need secant theta. So secant theta, I know that secant is uh, hypotenuse over adjacent. So secant of theta is the square root of 1 plus x squared. Right, so this is my substitution. I substituted at these in to make this integral easier. Now I'm substituting back out to get it in terms of x. Natural log of secant is square root of 1 plus x squared plus tangent is x. 
And again, that integral, I could just look it up in my, my integral table. Well, let's go ahead and do another one. So I've got this integral of 1 plus something squared. Yeah, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. This, this 4x squared, I could think of this as a 2x squared, right? Because the 4 isn't squared in there. And so now it's in the form that I can use for my, for my substitutions. And um, tangent, a squared plus x squared right, is 1. Triangle. This would be 2x. This would be 1. So that means that uh, tangent of theta is 2x over 1 is 2x. Uh, I also know then that x would be 1 half tangent of theta. And that would make this Pythagorean theorem uh, 1 plus 2x squared is, is 4x squared. So there's that. Okay. And now that I know what x is, I need to know what d of x is. And uh, derivative of tangent is secant squared. So that would be 1 half secant squared theta d theta. So let me substitute all that in. You know, one, one really common error is to forget about this part and just shove this in and not replace the dx. But notice dx is equal to this, 1 half secant squared d theta. Okay, I'm going to pull this 1 half out of here just for form. I might end up putting it in, who knows. We know that this 1 plus tangent squared, probably getting used to that at this point. We can look it up. It's secant squared. So we've got the square root of secant squared, which is secant. So in here we've got secant times secant squared. So we've got secant cubed theta d theta. So let's think about finding this. Uh, I could break this up into secant squared minus 1 times secant and that sort of thing. Although I'm going to show you... Um, something that's called a reduction formula. And I'll, I'll prove why they work, uh, at least why one of them works in the end. And these are good, good things to have. So I've got these reduction formulas for power. So if I have secant to some power, it reduces using this. So let me grab this and pull it over and see how I could use it. And again, you don't have to use that reduction if you want to break this into secant squared times secant. Boy, it's handy. Notice I have uh, my one half is here, but what I've got is secant cubed, so secant to the n. So this will be um, one over n minus one, so one half. Secant two less than this, so secant theta uh, times tangent theta plus two less than the degree over one less than the degree, so one half again. And then the integral of two less than the degree, so secant. So that is, uh, I think that's a little bit lovely. That's really nice. So uh, let's see what I can do here then. Well, this is just one-fourth secant tangent. This is also going to be a one-fourth. Oh, derivative of secant, I can look it up. Or I, I memorize it because I've seen it so many darn times. Natural log of secant plus tangent. So I've got all these pieces, and again, it's tempting to stop here, but this is, these are in terms of theta, and I was solving this in terms of x. So I'm going to resubstitute some stuff in. I know that tangent is 2x, and let me think about secant. Secant is um, hypotenuse over adjacent, right? It's cosine flipped. So secant, then, of this is square root of 1 plus 4x squared. So let's shove those back in there. Uh, one fourth times square root of one plus four x squared times this tangent of theta is two x plus uh, this two will take care of that. So this is be one half square root one plus four x squared x which I could write as x times the square root of 1 plus 4x squared over 2. Then over here, I still have my 1 fourth 
uh, natural log, and these are just going to plug in 1 plus 4x squared and tangent plus 2x. So this would be plus 1 fourth, or you could put the whole thing over 4 if you wanted. It's okay to leave it either way. Ooh-wee, look at that. All right, let's take a peek at one more. So I look at this one again, it's, it's x squared plus plus a. So x squared a plus x squared, x squared plus a, that's gonna be a tangent substitution that I'm gonna do. So this is the same as four plus x squared. So notice in this case, a is not four, um, it's a two, right? Because I'm looking for the form a squared plus x squared. x is gonna be two times tangent of theta get my triangle in here. So that means that tangent of theta is x over 2. Opposite over adjacent. Pythagorean theorem gives us x squared plus 2 squared. Right? And if x is this, don't forget to do this part, dx, because we're going to need to substitute it in for dx. Tangent, it's derivative of secant squared. Got x cubed, so 2 cubed is 8. Tangent cubed is tangent cubed. And then I've got x squared plus 4. So x squared, that's 4 tangent squared plus 4. And then dx is 2 times secant squared theta d theta. Lots of pieces here. All right, so let's throw some stuff together. I've got this 8. I've got this 2, so that's a 16. Forgot the theta with the tangent. Uh, tangent cubed theta. I've got this thing in here. Let me let me pull this out of here. 4 tangent squared theta plus 4. Notice I could factor a 4 out of here, but it's still square rooted. So I have square root of 4 tangent squared plus 1. Okay. That's convenient. Square root of 4 is 2. So that's 2 square root of tangent squared. Ah! We know that's secant squared. So square root of secant squared is secant. So all of this is 2 times secant. We've already multiplied that 2 by that 8. Secant squared. So let's combine this. 2 times 16 is 32. So I've got 32. Uh, tangent cubed, secant cubed. <laughs> wow, okay. So that's fantastic. Let's start to break this thing up then somehow. Let's have a secant tangent. Uh, I like that because then I know I know I can do a u substitution. So pull that 32 out of there. I'm going to reduce this. I'm going to say this is tangent squared, secant squared times uh, secant times tangent. And you see why I did this? Because I'm, I'm looking to do a u substitution. I know that, that secant times tangent is, um, is the derivative of secant. So I'm looking to do a secant u substitution. And this would be my, my du. So since I want a secant substitution, I'm going to rewrite this tangent as secant squared minus one. And so now that I have this, now I could say let u equal secant. The derivative of secant is secant times tangent. See, that's why we did that kind of forward. So that means we have u squared minus 1 times u squared. And then all of this is du. Look at that. Oh, that's so beautiful how it simplifies. Uh, distribute that u squared into there. Oh, it feels so good. And so then this is going to be 32. Do this integral, 1 fifth u to the fifth minus 1 third u cubed. And we know that u was secant theta, so let's substitute that back in. I'm just going to distribute this 32 in here. I'm going to say 32 fifths. 
and now I, I substituted out of the U, but I've got to substitute out of that trig substitution that I did as well to get it back in terms of X. And everything's in terms of secant. So as I look at this, I can see that secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. So let me substitute that on in there. This is a one half power, right? So and then when we substitute this in, we've got 32 fifths. And then this would be uh, x squared plus four to the five halves power, right? Five times a half. And then this x is also to the fifth power. And then these would be cubed. So to the three halves power and then x cubed. Whew, good stuff. Here's another one for us to do. So taking a look at this, I've got x squared minus 9. So if I go back to this, this trig, x squared minus 9, this is going to make me think about secant. And notice it's not a 9. Well, it is a 9, but that's a 3 squared is how I'm going to think. Um, secant theta. And again, if you look at the, the triangle for this, secant of theta is x over 3. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And so if we use Pythagorean theorem, notice this side is x squared minus 9. x squared minus 3 squared. Okay, so if x is 3 secant theta, dx is 3, and the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Get up as many times. So let's substitute on in here. So we've got the, the integral of the square root. If I square x, I get 9 secant squared dx is 3 times secant theta tangent theta. Simplifying this, I could factor a 9 out of that. Square root of 9 is 3. This just becomes a little dance that happens every time. Secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. So 3 tangent. So this is 3 times tangent times 3 times secant times tangent. So 3 times 3 is 9. Take that 9 out of there. And I'll keep going from here. Tangent squared times secant. And if I go to think about doing this one, let's, uh, yeah, let's get everything in terms of tangent. I, I'm sorry, in secant. So tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. We just keep going back and forth, back and forth between those two representations. It's kind of great. Distribute that secant into there. And we can break this one up into, uh, into two pieces. What this is, I could break this up again. I think that what I'll do, though, is just use that reduction formula. I have secant cubed. Zoom out, go over to my uh, reference material, and I notice that I have it written here somewhere. Oh, there we go. There's my reduction formula for secant. So this is going to be 9 times. So n is 3, so it's 1 half secant power reduced by 2, so secant tangent plus reduced by 2, reduced by 1, so 1 half again, integral of just secant. I'm going to throw this, this 9 into here just to clean this up. So I've got uh, 9 halves secant theta tangent theta plus 9 halves. The derivative of secant I know is natural log um, secant plus tangent. I can look it up if I don't remember it. And then minus 9, and the derivative of secant, I just did it. And then I have this. I'm not done. I've got it in terms of theta. I've got to substitute back in those x values. Well, I know that secant uh, is x over 3. I'm going to need a tangent as well. Tangent is this over 3. 
and then you could substitute those all in um, and get your get your integral for that. So again, a big idea is two more substitutions we can do to make uh, certain classes of integrals easy to do. X squared minus A squared, square root of that, square root of A squared uh, plus X squared. A couple little manipulation things I want to show you. Um, just kind of standard things to think about. Let's say this was my triangle. That's a theta. Uh, tangent theta is 1 over x. Sine theta is 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. Cos theta is x over 1 plus x squared. Um, what I want to point out is sometimes there are cases where you've got this integral and you do it. There's a cloud of integral work and you get an answer like, one half theta plus one half sine theta cos theta. So notice that like when I have the sine theta, I can just do that straight substitution, cos theta, straight substitution. But if I just have theta, I need to write this in terms of, uh, of theta because I want to substitute just for theta. So if tangent theta is one over x, theta is uh, arc tangent of one over x. And you know you can write that in this notation as well. So if I go to substitute back into this, I'm going to have one half um, arctan of one over x plus, and then these would be in terms of x. So that's a substitution that can happen. Another thing I want you to think about: if I end up here, and I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure how to do that integral. Sometimes turning things into um, in terms of sine and cosine. Will help a lot. So for example, think of this as uh, secant times 1 over tangent d theta. And you know that secant is a reciprocal of cosine. So this is 1 over cosine. And tangent is sine over cosine. So 1 over tangent, cotangent, is uh, cosine over sine. Let's say this is squared just to clean it up. So this would be cosine squared over sine squared and cosine theta divided by cosine theta. That eliminates one of them, leaving me a cosine theta over sine squared. And this might be an easy integral to do than that. So sometimes you've got to, um, you know, to throw things in ter ter terms of sine and cosine, and that may help. Now these reduction ones I kind of uh, but really they come out of uh, but really they just come out of work that we could do it's like we could we could prove any of these so I'm just gonna grab the tangent one and show them this is like this is not a bad exercise to do too if you're interested so I'm gonna do this uh, integral of tan to the power of n so first off uh, I'm going to break this up. I'm going to pull out a tangent squared from this. So I'm going to have a tangent squared. And notice if I do that, I had to take two of these tangents out of here, right? Like if this is tangent to the fifth, what would be left is tangent cubed. So this would be tangent uh, n minus 2. And so let's think of this tangent squared as secant squared uh, minus 1. So distribute that tangent x into there. And I just broke up the integral across the subtraction sign. Two steps thrown together there. And so then now I've got this part, which that's kind of cool. And if you look, that's like this part right here. So where does this come from? Well, if I think about uh, doing this, I know that I can do a u substitution for this. So I'm going to let u equal tangent, du equals secant squared dx. So notice what I'm doing here is I'm taking the integral of u to the n minus 2. Just working this left-hand side right here. Well, that would be u to the n minus 1 times 1 over n minus 1, right? Like 
right? We, this, it, this increases by one, n minus two plus one is n minus one. And then this is just like compensates for that. So we've got that. And we know that our substitution was tangent. So we've got one over n minus one tangent of n minus one. All of this became, and then what we have is our, our formula, our substitution, like that's it right there. So this is just a generalized, just do it once and you can just reduce the, uh, the power with that. Okay, these reduction formulas are really useful. So if you end up with like secant to the fifth, use this. Hey, post any questions that you have uh, in the forum or message me and uh, do that practice.